You know, I believe in a formless style, a style that is able to quickly adapt to the situation, to the environment, to the terrain. You know, I believe as a martial artist, that forms and style need to extend to the way of weapons and strategy. And through this strategy comes a knowledge of tactics. These are the things I believe. Who's out of town today? Who came in from out of town? Nice, nice. Well, thank you for coming here. Um, enjoy Colorado. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to get any snow in when you guys are here. We, we got hit by snow last week pretty hard. So, all right. So, Street Fighter. What is Street Fighter? Uh, what is what is the technique behind forms and styles, right? Well, I'll tell you, I'm a martial artist. I've been a martial artist since I was eight years old. And when I first started in the martial arts, it was traditional, right? I didn't know anything, right? So I started off traditional martial arts, the strike movements, okay? It wasn't until I went into the special forces training was when UFC started coming out, right? Around 97, UFC started coming out and everybody's like, whoa, this is how a fight should happen, even myself. I'm like, wow, this is martial arts. This is how things work. So I dedicated eight years to jujitsu. I kind of stepped away from every martial art and I practiced ground fighting for eight years. And I was assigned to pretty specialized units. And during the Iraq war, we were engaging the enemy at very close range. We were killing our enemies at a very close range. And then throughout the process of my career, I had to start working in, in more of the covert missions. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that what I perceive with martial arts is not going to play out in a real street fight, okay? I have seen two brothers hack up each other's with machetes in the streets of South America, right? I've seen guys get gunned down in Africa. So what martial arts is going to defend against a little boy with an AK? What martial art is going to defend against a Turk coming up to you in Bosnia and stabbing you, right? So you need to get past the mindset of what you perceive is what's going to work in, in what UFC is going to work in, in a real fight. Yes, those techniques are universal. You, know, you get knocked out, you get knocked out, right? But the thing is that if you come with the mindset of a cage fighter, then that's your mindset, right? Because in a real fight, it's all about the guns and the knives and the impact weapons and the rocks that you can find. You don't fight fair. If you fight fair, then your strategy sucks. Understand this? You have to understand yourself, okay? So that's the first thing is you have to eliminate the mind. What you perceive as effective, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you as a former Green Beret who's worked in 27 countries, I, I would tell you what I perceived before the war is definitely not after the war. And I process a lot of my techniques and styles that I drew from and, I, and I'm gonna give you what worked for me. So what is Street Fighter? Street Fighter extends past physical movement, okay? You have to understand timing and you have to understand distance. I could draw out if somebody's following me through time, distance, and change of direction. I could shoot somebody if I can process time and distance, right? So it's the same thing with uh, combatives, right? I'm not going to pull out a blade and the blade's three inches and start swinging the blade when we're not at that range. You understand you have to understand the effective range of your weapon and your weapons if you don't have what you perceive as a weapon means your hands 
where do I hit somebody to cause the effects I want, right? And think about like if you think UFC, right? If I come up to you and all you know is UFC and you you brainwash your 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 mind to this is effective. Now I'm not saying it's not effective. But if you come at me with a series of punches and I stick my fingers that in movement. your eyes, who wins? Okay. Or I'm See? busting open his ears. If I hit you in your ears and bust out your eardrums and you don't have balance, who wins? Right? If I stick my finger in your eyes and I pull a blade and shove a blade into your face, who wins? Because you came in with the mindset of a fair fight and there's no such thing. See, my experience backs it up because I've seen women and children getting gunned down and burned and, and what war is not fair. Do you understand this? So my mindset is I take from my experience of war and I give it to you. Now, the thing is, I'm not giving you the 100% solution. There's no answer to this is going to save your life or not. I'm going to give you a technique and a technique off of my experience. And my experience comes from the extremes. But you have to take the technique and you have to morph into your body. How you move is different from how you move. How you process things is different from how you process things. Do you understand this? It's not about the threat only. It's the threat. It's where the threat's coming from. So if he's holding a weapon in his right hand, then that's the threat hand. But he's the threat. And then everything around the threat, the surroundings. Right, the situation. What what situation are you? Are you in a Muslim country? You're gonna stick a blade in, unless you want to get stoned, right? You want to drug out in the streets to make it on CNN. You understand this? You have to understand your operational environment. Okay. All right. So in the process of things, you need to understand timing and distance. Amber, if I take away your distance, what do I take away? Take your time to react. Bruce Lee talked about, you know, in, in the martial arts, he talks about your offense needs to be your defense, right? In close quarters combat, if I saturate your mind and I'm hitting you at different angles all the time, your brain is constantly trying to what? Process what's going on. And through that process, then you have to come up with a solution and then the execution, you understand? If I'm constantly attacking you in an offensive movement, I'm processing it. You're not. I'm taking away your ability to process. In the special forces, we call it surprise speed and violence. Okay, you hit the guy, get surprised. So if the guy comes at you with a stick, you pull a blade, you shove it in his face. Surprise, I got a knife. Surprise, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to hit you with speed and violence. You understand? So distance has a lot to do today, and you have to understand that. We have to understand the concept before you can start coming up with your theory on stuff. You understand? You have to understand the reasoning why I'm teaching you this stuff. Understand that? Because a lot of people always go, what if this? What if that? What if? There's too many what ifs. All right? You have to eliminate the what ifs right now and take in the teachings. Once you leave here, you can process the information. But if you come in with a mindset of what if, what if, you may never learn. Okay? You have to absorb what I'm saying to you. So the concept today is being able to understand center line and off center line of your opponent. That's number one. You have to understand how to get past his energy. All right? In close quarters battle and knife fighting, he has a center line. So if your opponent he has a line from his head down to his groin. I have a head down to my groin. So if I stand center line, I have to worry about both his hands, both his legs, and his head. Do you understand this? In the military, we call this the X, the kill zone. Okay, so punch. Within his kill zone, this is his effective range for his punches. Do you understand? Obviously, he could throw hooks and stuff like that, yes. But this right here is in his effective range. If I move one step, to the left or to the right, and that line runs from his head down to his groin, what did I just do? What did I just do there? Sir? That's right. I took away his arsenal, right? Half his arsenal. 
So if I'm standing here in the X, I'm at 100% of his arsenal, both his hands and both his legs. So if I move one step to the left or to the right, I'm basically cutting his body in half, eliminating 50% of his arsenal. Now, with timing, it comes with timing, okay? So if he throws a punch, see, I'm already in. I'm already in. See, I'm already in here. If I go like this, damn, I lost it, right? So if he resets, I lost it. I'm back to that. I'm back to that 100%, you understand? So he throws. Now, now I'm close. So he lost his 100%. So you have to understand timing. It's not about pairing an attack and go, damn, too. that shit works. <laughs> right? It's about taking that distance. See, I'm already close to him. I'm already close to him right here. I'm moving towards him. That's the biggest thing is that when a guy has a knife, a gun, I mean, I, I've seen it, okay? A lot of people want to stay back here, Right? Well, if he has a knife and he's coming at me, if I'm staying back here, I'm always on that X, man. But if he comes at me, and I'm, now it's a different game. Understand? Notice how I have to close in that ground. You have to understand the angles of attack on the blade, the positive attack on the blade and the negative attack on the blade. So if I'm swinging a blade, this is positive, right? This is positive going to, to hit my opponent. Once I hit my opponent, then this is negative. This is negative energy. So negative energy, you have to be able to control that negative energy and get back to that positive energy, that positive strike. You understand? So as he's throwing, you have to, as he's throwing angle, see, this is positive. As he's throwing, that's positive. See, now he's negative. So I'm looking at those angles. I'm looking at positive energy and negative energy. Once he swings through, I'm, I'm breaching. You understand? Once that, that threat clears, I'm breaching. Or I could parry the threat. All right. So how do we get off center line, right? I've been to 27 countries, and I work with a lot of indigenous commando forces. I work with a lot of tier one commando forces overseas in UK, Israelis. And, and I tell you, I, I pulled a lot of forms and styles from all. I'm not talking about just hands. And, and, and blaze. I'm talking about tactics, strategy. I pulled it all. all right, and I wrote it down in my book. And before the war, when I say before the war, we are always at war. The Green Berets are always doing stuff, right? But when we invaded a country, that's what I'm talking about, Iraq, um, the, the war became very up close and personal, closer than, than I ever experienced. You know, obviously in training, we, we do it. But to take a human life at that range is different. And what you perceive in, uh, in training, it doesn't play out in, in real life. You understand this, okay? So you have to come in with a mindset, a strong mindset to not back up away from that threat. Okay, so the techniques you're learning today comes with a mindset. If you don't have that mindset, then you don't have this technique. Okay, so, in my, in my travels, I went to Indonesia where we are training and we are learning the ancient art of Sulat. This movement is called Hubad. Hubad translated means to tie and untie the hands. Okay? So it's a lot to do with like Wing Chun, sticky hands, but it's more uh, direct. Like if you see Steven Seagal, he's really direct with some of his parry movements. He executes a little bit of uh, what I see is slot into uh, Aikido. Okay, so really direct stuff. So to start off, to understand the concept of it, this is a parry technique. All right, so you want to go left, right, left. Okay, so left. Notice how where I'm parrying. I'm parrying right here, and then I'm shielding right here. So as I parry, I shield and I tap. Parry, tap. Notice how it's effortless. Hmm? Effortless. So power, hold. Don't let me move it. See, his power's here. Uh, it's not strong power. His power isn't here. Because, well, don't let me move it. Because this can go to his eyes, see? Right to his eyes. Or right to his face. 
understand that. So in the art of JKD, Jikundu, by Bruce Lee, he talks about intercepting fists. He talks about being able to intercept that power prior to that, that power hitting you. Understand? So think about a bullet. If I draw a gun, I fire, boom. Right, that bullet spins. Okay? And as it's coming at you, if I can kind of be fast enough to slow down time, just tap it to the left or right, it goes off the trajectory. Right? So that bullet comes to you, and we're able to freeze and tap it, that bullet comes off the trajectory. I'm kind of doing that. I'm intercepting that force prior to it, it hitting me. So left, right, left. Notice how as soon as I parry, it's offline. So he's coming towards my face right here. As he comes, see, it's already offline. See, as soon as this, this comes up, I'm already offline right here. Okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Notice how I'm processing his speed. Okay? Left, right, left. Why are we targeting the right side right now? Well, first, a journey of a thousand miles, again, a single step, right? So this is your first step in understanding. Okay? Trust me, when I first learned this, I'm like, really? That's it? That's some stupid shit. Right? And today he started fucking me up, right? In the jungles. And I'm like, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. That works. All right? So it does work. Just, just bear with that first movement. If you don't get the left, right, left initially, then my friend, you will never advance on today. Okay? So if you're trying to overthink what I'm doing right now, you'll never get to where you need to be today. So you need to listen to the instructions and hear what I'm saying because the technique is going to basically advance on to other techniques in blades and sticks and impact weapons. That's where we're going today. It's not about empty hands. It's about me getting to my guns and knives or a pen or a fucking rock or anything I can find. Understand? Okay. So the first movement is you're going to partner up. The partner is going to basically just stand there like this, right? And I want you to look at the distance. If you're at this distance right here, is that a hubad movement? Look, look. I'm leaning forward. When I lean forward, when I lean forward, what happens? When you lean forward, what happens in your balance is off? And what happens in the car? Yeah. You're gonna get on your you're gonna fall on your ass, right? I'm gonna sweep you. Because it's easy to sweep somebody once you feel their balance. And the only way to feel the balance is if you go light hands. So if you're going heavy like this, right? Look at the energy. Look at where the energy is going. If I go light hands, he's not, his hands are moving, but his body's not moving. So you have to go light hands with that. Understand? First movement. Left, right, left. It's not three contacts. And it's not like this. See? Water flows downstream, see? Left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Water doesn't flow like this, right? So I don't want to see this. Because once, once we have a blade in our hands, if you do this, what happens? But if you have a blade in your hands here, see? The blade now has parried out attack, and it's cleared that pathway, understand? Any questions on the first drill, who bought? What's who bought mean, sir? <laughs> <laughs> to tie and untie the hands, okay? Partner up, tie and untie the hands. Also, when, when I hit my opponent, when I parry my opponent, he feels it, okay? I probably bashed up my forearms and more times than uh, I couldn't imagine, right? On wind chung dummies and, and trees and stuff like that, wherever I could get my hands on. So my forearms power, right? So when I parry attack, he feels it. When I hit him in a, in a joint, he feels it, okay? It's not about just movement, it's about developing your body into a weapon. Okay? Because if I could tell you, hey, stick your fingers through somebody's eyes, 
if I if I create this on my fingers and I could shove it through an apple, because many years of practicing, what do you think that's going to do to the human? So it's more about just movements. It's about be able to uh, strengthen your body, right? Some of the uh, the wrist movements that I, I practice, I practice my wrist strength a lot because in the war I had to control people, all right? I had to grab people and control them. So during that process, I started to develop my wrist strength. One of the, the ways I developed my wrist strength is I basically I kind of get into this position, I hold it, right? and then I'll start slowly start doing push ups on my wrists. And through time, you start developing strength. You learn a weapon.